Zucchini bread is one of my favorite treats to make whenever I have fresh grown zucchini. And it was a staple in my home growing up and when my children grew up. But I meet so many people who have never even heard of it. Now to me, it's not an old fashioned treat, but to many people, it is. Join me today as I show you how easy it is to make this really special treat. Hey friends, it's Barbara Sue at Kowalski Mountain. Welcome back to our channel. Now zucchini bread is a really special treat in our house and it is always my go-to recipe on the very first zucchini of the season because it is such a treasured treat. Now I'm gonna be making it with fresh ground flour but you can use it with any kind of flour that you have on hand. Now this is my Nutramil Harvest Grain Mill and I am really loving my grain mill. Now, it's a little bit of a learning curve when you're learning how to use fresh ground flour, and I still struggle a bit, but it's worth the effort because the bread is so much more healthy for you to have all the parts of the wheat and to have all the nutrients that the wheat contains. Now, first on the agenda is we're gonna grind up the wheat berries so we can get started. Now we need three cups of flour for today's recipe and when we go ahead and pour in these wheat berries the motor to the grain mill has to be on first and that's because if you pour in the wheat berries first they're going to fill the spaces between the stones and it's not going to be able to start. So we're going to get it started. <laughs> Now I'm right at three cups of flour and I have a little reserve in the refrigerator so I'm going to say that's good enough. Today I'm using soft white wheat berries for my zucchini bread. This is a quick bread, it's not a yeast bread. And I bought my wheat berries from Bread Becker's Co-op. It's a much more affordable way to ship items from Bread Becker by becoming a co-op member. The next thing that we need to do on our preparation to make our zucchini bread is to grate the zucchini and I'm going to be using my uh, Bosch mixer to do that. Now, when we purchased my mixer, the deluxe mixer was on sale and it was actually a really great deal to get the deluxe versus just buying the mixer. So we did that and that meant that we have the uh, slicing and shredding blades. Now this makes it an all-in-one project. I can do my mixing and my grating all in a single bowl. So first I'm going to put on the top here that extends the bowl. And then next up are the couplers. And then we have the blade. Now the blades are pretty ingenious, I thought. Um, they're reversible, so if I want to do uh, large shredded zucchini, I do this side up. If I want to do a fine shredded zucchini, I do this side up. We're going to do the fine shredded zucchini for today's recipe. And there it is, it's all together. Now this is such a large zucchini, I'm gonna have to cut it into quite a bit smaller pieces to get it into the uh, shredder slicer. And you don't peel your zucchini. You can if you want to, 
but I love to see the little flecks of green in my zucchini bread. We're going to turn it on and we're going to grate the zucchini. All right, so let's make some zucchini bread. I'm gonna use the same bowl, but I just wanna measure out my zucchini and see you know, where I'm at. Uh, we do need two cups, and we're also gonna squeeze some of the water out of this. So a little bit more will actually be better. Now I'll be real honest with you, I don't always measure it, I just throw it in. Now zucchini can be very watery and then it makes your batter really watery as well. So to help with that, we just squeeze out some of the excess moisture in the zucchini. Now I don't always do this step, uh, but the last one I made was pretty watery and took a lot longer to bake. <laughs> It did bake, but we're going to go ahead and do it today just as a little precaution. Now you can see just from the bowl that there's a lot of liquid in that zucchini, so that extra step is really worthwhile. All right, so let's add some of the other ingredients. We're gonna add some oil, and I'm using olive oil today. You can use any type that you prefer. Now we need three eggs. It's always good practice when you're using fresh eggs to always crack them into a separate bowl. I need to add my paddles. Now today I'm using the cake paddles to do this recipe. Now the cake paddles also were part of the deluxe uh, package that I got with my Bosch mixer. Now I'm gonna add some sugar. And normally I use pure cane sugar. Um, but I did a pantry inventory recently and I found a bag of white sugar. So I'm using it up. I think that's two cups. I was losing count while I was talking. <laughs> now it's time to add the vanilla. Now I'm using my homemade vanilla extract and I did a video all about how I make uh, vanilla extract and you can watch that here. Um, it's really easy to do and this is just really amazing stuff. It's smelling so good. Now I almost never measure vanilla the way it's supposed to be. I just like it and I just put in as much as I want to. That was three tablespoons. Now, whenever I cook, I like to do as few dishes as possible. Um, I wash everything by hand, so I don't need any excess dishes. Now, I'm, I have my recipe here in um, my Recipe Keeper app. And if you missed the video about the Recipe Keeper app, I'm going to put that up here as well. It allows me to organize all of my recipes and I have everything right here on my tablet or my phone. So we got some baking powder, some baking soda, some salt, some cinnamon, allspice, and finally cloves. 
Now to get the full recipe, I'm going to put a link down in the description box. You can find it on my blog, KowalskiMountain.com. Now one of the things that my husband really likes about my Bosch mixer is that it has a cover. Because um, I'm a bit of a messy cook, but that's okay. I'm going to add the zucchini at this point. Now it's time to add the fresh ground flour. Now fresh ground flour, because it contains all the parts of the wheat berry, it has the bran, the endosperm, and the germ, and because of that, it's not shelf stable. So any extra flour has to be kept in the refrigerator. Get this cover on here, and we're going to mix this up. And there it is. Now one of the features that I love about my Bosch mixer is it has a place to stow, oops, to stow the cord. I really like this feature. I have a one of those plastic set of shelves in my pantry. Let's turn this the other way. And you know how the cords can get stuck inside the shelves um, when you put things on it? Well this really helps because it's stowed and it doesn't get caught. And I really like this feature of the Bosch mixer. Now I'm done with the mixer, so we're going to get this out of our way. Now Philip and I are empty nesters, and as a result, whenever I make things like this, I always make them in mini loaf pans, because we don't need to eat an entire, or this actually makes two loaves, we don't need to eat two loaves of zucchini bread at a time. Um, and, and we wouldn't, it would go to waste. So I make these little mini zucchini breads. Um, this has about a cup of mix in it, and these are perfect for our family as empty nesters. Now the big loaf does make two loaves of zucchini bread, um, and you can, you know, stick one in the freezer and eat the other. This this bread freezes very well. Now I'm just giving this a spritz of some olive oil spray. Now that oven is preheating to 320, 325 degrees. Now these hold about a cup of batter. Now I don't have any more of those mini pans, which I really wish I did, but I don't. And my bread loaf pans are way too big. So I have this disposable pan. I'm going to use it instead. I reuse it. It's really heavy duty and it's a much better size than the bread 
pans I have. Now the full size loaves would cook for 50 to 60 minutes. I'm going to check those mini loaves in 30 minutes just to make sure they don't over bake. So to tell that your bread is done, you want to stick a toothpick inside and it needs to come out clean in the center. So that's what we're aiming for. So we'll be right back. I think they're ready. Yes, they are. Oh, not that one. This larger one is not. It's going to go back in. Now these look beautiful. Now I'm going to let these cool and once they cool for a little bit, I'll take them out of the uh, pans. Yes, all done. So these are going to cool and then we're going to pop them out of the loaf pans. Now that this bread is partially Cool. We're going to go ahead and take it out of the loaf pan so it can completely cool. Now these little crock um, pans are really hot. <laughs> they hold their heat. Mm -hmm. So I just work my knife around the edge and I kind of get push it away from the crock so that it'll separate. Now if you notice I put a cup of batter in these and then I put just a smidge more because it looked like it could use it but that's why they went over the edge because I added that smidge more. <laughs> Now this one's cooling a lot faster because it's not in that thick crock pan. Gonna do the same thing, just kind of push the edges away. And I just flip it out. Now I'm gonna keep these covered uh, while they continue cooling and once they're completely cooled, I will put them away. Now I do freeze my extra loaves so that we can have a treat whenever we want one. Well, since I have this little piece, I'm going to go ahead and give it a bite. It is so good. It is so moist. That's one thing I love about this recipe is how moist it is. Mm. Awesome. If you try this recipe, go ahead and give me a comment down in the comment box. I'd love to hear how your zucchini bread turned out. Now the last thing to do is to put these into storage and we buy Ziplocs in bulk. And I can't find them. So I'm just going to do a couple here. But the zucchini bread is not going to need to go into long-term storage because we'll eat it too fast for that. So I just do this super simple. I wrap it in Ziploc bags. And that is sufficient for use in the freezer for short-term use. I wouldn't do that for long-term use. Now this larger one... This one I would actually cut in half for us um, and store it in two pieces is how I would uh, 
make this go a little bit further, but I'm actually giving this away as a treat. So I'm gonna leave it whole. Now, until I find my, my Ziploc bags, I'm just gonna stick this in here and I'll store it this way. Friends, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate you here and being a part of the Kowalski Mountain family. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, hit that button. We'll see you next time.